Welcome everyone! In this tutorial, I'll guide you step by step through the process of creating a 2D platformer game using the 2D platformer template plugin. If you'd like to follow along with the same assets I'm using, be sure to check out the link in the description. Let's begin by organizing our content. First, move the content from the plugin's content folder into your project's main content folder. Ensure that Show Engine Content is enabled in the settings, then navigate to the Splatformer 2 D Template Plugin folder. Create a new folder within the content directory named Platformer 2 D Content, and copy all subfolders from the plugin content into this new folder. Now let's set up the player character. Start by opening the data table for character animations. Blueprints, animations DT underscore character animation. You'll notice a pre-configured data table for animation states such as idle, run, and jump, making it easy to set up your animations. Just assign the appropriate flipbook. Once that's done, open the BP underscore player base character located in the player subfolder within the Blueprints directory. In the viewport, select the sprite component in the components panel. In the details panel, set the source flipbook to your idle state animation. Adjust the size of the capsule component to match the dimensions of your sprite. Next, click on the Animation component. In the Details panel under Animation, set the Data Table to DT underscore Character Animation. Now select the Character Game component to configure various gameplay parameters in the Details panel. Respawn Delay. Adjust the delay before the player respawns after death. Can Attack. Determine if the player has the ability to attack enemies. Walking Factor. Modify the running speed and adjust how jump velocity is influenced when running. Downfall. Factor. Control how quickly the player descends when the down button is pressed mid-air. Enable Coyote Time. Allow the player to jump momentarily after leaving the ground. Enable Wall Slide. Enable Wall Sliding with options to adjust wall distance and slide speed. Gems. Set the number of collectibles. Can grab. Determine if the player can grab certain objects. Default damage amount. Specify the default amount of damage dealt to enemies. Under the widget panel, set the player stat widget class to UI underscore player, which serves as the player HUD. 
Now let's focus on configuring the character's movement. Click on the character movement component to adjust parameters such as the walking speed, for example. Next, open the health component. In the details panel, you can set the values for health and max health. This character also includes a character classes component, but you can remove it if needed. In the details panel, you can configure the player's class, such as a fighter, and adjust attributes like mana and stamina. Now let's test the level. You should see that the player is able to move as expected. Enhancing the game with various interactions, let's add a dead zone, navigate to the interactions subfolder, and locate BP underscore dead zone. Place it in a location within the level that the player should avoid. Now when the player enters the dead zone, they will respawn at the last checkpoint. Reopen BP underscore player base character, where you'll find several custom events like One to Me Killed, which triggers when the player defeats an enemy. There's also One to Me is Dead, which calls Game Over, and respawns the character at the last checkpoint. Additionally, the event on interaction with NPC allows the player to interact with other NPCs. Let's add more interaction elements. Open BP underscore chest, select the viewport, and set the source sprite to the chest. In the details panel, look for the platformer 2D section, which is present in all interaction elements and contains various parameters you can modify. Here you can set the sprite lock and sprite unlock which define the flipbook states for when the chest is opened and closed. You can also assign a key to unlock class if you want the chest to require a key for unlocking. Enable the loop sprite animation parameter if your flipbook uses a looping animation. You can also specify the sound effects for locking and unlocking the chest. Additionally, you can add a hint to any interaction to guide the player. Simply set the widget class to UI underscore hint and adjust parameters like the hint text. Place the BP underscore chest in the level and when the player approaches, the hint will display press E to open chest. The chest also has a prize component which can spawn an item such as a gem upon unlocking. The prize class can be any actor. That concludes the first tutorial. In the next video, I'll guide you through setting up other interactions and enemies.